so the major three kind of the infections are more common in the intestine amebiasis tuberculosis and typhoid some others may be but these are the three most common conditions of infective conditions uh, specific conditions may be and the intestine so one by one we will discuss you already had uh, i think uh, all these things in the pathology and pathogenesis may be learned so just uh, here about this little uh, just a reminder of you so intestinal amebiasis the causative organism is antamoeba histolytica the transmission uh, transmission is through fecal oral route uh, means the patients uh, uh, ingest the the uh, larva or the cyst of the antamoeba histolytica through the food or the water the contaminated food or contaminated water so they that create uh, that uh, intermeba histolytica creates ulcers in the intestine that ulcers are very deep ulcer that's why they also call the bottle neck ulcers you can see in the picture the, the this very deep ulcers in there and but the very narrow narrow and deep ulcers and these ulcers usually uh, present in the uh, ileum and uh, they help the undermined edges that's why they are deep the floor is full with a yellow necrotic tissue the floor of the ulcer usually filled with a yellow necrotic tissues ulcer discharges the pus and the blood into the lumen of the intestines and the patients uh, that's why the patient may pass these uh, the loose watery stool sometime mix with the blood or the pulse uh, biopsy should be shot during the endoscopy to confirm means the during while the endoscopy that either uh, recto sigmoidoscopy or that uh, the colonoscopy you found that deep deep ulcers with the floor uh, fluid uh, yellow, uh, uh, pus discharge and yellow necrotic tissue in the floor of that uh, ulcers so that conditions we must take the biopsy of from from the ulcers to confirm the amoebic ulcers or other conditions the clinical feature is the main clinical feature from the amoebic abscess, uh, amoebic uh, uh, amoebiasis that is dysentery dysentery means there is the uh, multiple uh, patient passing multiple times stool liquid stool along with tenesmus and urgency in the stool sometime patient may pass the blood along with the loose stools uh the presentation may be different along with the dys dysentery patient may have the mass just like appendicular mass uh because the most common uh, part of the bowel affected that is here also the cecal cecal area so that that in that if that cecal area is inflamed then it present as a cecal mass just similar to the appendicitis and appendicular mass uh if the ulcers uh, uh, ulcers can uh, perforate then patient may present with the intestinal perforations just all the symptoms of the intestinal perforations most common site of the for the perforation is the cecum and the recto sigmoid part A granuloma granuloma is that uh, nothing just the uh, benign tumor uh, made of the granulation tissue that that uh, by by the inspection or by seeing it is very difficult to differentiate from the tu uh, tumor or the cancer so that here the biopsy is also very much required ulcerative uh, colitis may be the presentation because sometimes the uh, ulcer the features of the ulcerative colitis may be uh, uh, similar to that amebiasis sometime ulcerative colitis uh, patient have ulcerative colitis along with super added infection of the antimoeba histolytica that is uh, along with ulcerative uh, that amebias so if your patient uh, has uh, you have suspect the patient of ulcerative colitis then in that condition don't forget to do for that uh, stool examination with because sometimes to that uh, ulcerative colitis may have the amebiasis also in that condition you have find the cyst of the 
I mean, antimiba has to kind of stool up the patient. So, you, if you are treating a patient of ulcerative colitis, then don't forget to do the other stool examinations. Uh, fibrous structures in later conditions when the ulcers heal because the deep ulcer involve the muscle layer, so that they create uh, structure formations after the healing in the wall of the uh, intestine. That's uh, narrowing the lumen. Later on, these due to narrowing of the lumen, that may cause the uh, subacute or acute intestinal obstructions. In some conditions, maybe some uh, some other infection may be associated with that antibiotic that may create some uh, abscess or some other infections. So that may present as a parapolic abscess, ischiorectal abscess, or ischiorectal fistula. So these are the, some other complications. I Means are the presentations in form of uh, you can find uh, you can find a patient uh, along with uh, amebiasis. What is the treatment? Uh, if if there is a no complication, means the severe complication like perforations or uh, intestinal obstruction or the fistula, your if if these complications are not there, then you can treat your patient easily with the uh, chemotherapy. Means the medicines, uh, the medicines uh, used to treat that condition that is the uh, metronidazole. Usually the dose of metronidazole is 400 milligram, but in that these conditions, 800 milligrams uh, thrice daily for the seven days will be sufficient to treat the conditions. Uh, the, the important point to note that uh, though the, con the condition of the colon is inflamed, that is inflammation is there, but in that conditions, use of that uh, high dose steroids should be avoided in that conditions that may lead some fatal complications. Diloxamide fluidate is good for the chronic infection because it, it, it damage or destroy the cyst also uh, so that the, it uh, is stopping the spreading infection by the, uh, the infected patients. Conditions usually comes under control with the medical management. Surgery is indicated only in the case of the complications. So means that the surgery for the amoebiasis uh, is only advised if patient have any kind of the complication just like intestinal perforations, intestinal obstructions, or the formation of the fistula. Otherwise, patient can be treated with the medical therapies. Next condition is the typhoid. The main organism the organism uh, responsible for the typhoid infection that is Salmonella typhi. The ulcers, uh, the, there is a typical ulcers of the typhoid are present in the intestine that is that are parallel to the axis of the gut. Means if this is the axis of gut, so ulcers are also like this. Means ulcers always present in the uh, parallel to the longitudinal axis of the gut. Uh, usually situated in the lower part of the ileum, along with other uh, complications, nice nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, high grade fever. The other surgical complications associated with typhoid are the hemorrhage, perforations, cholecystitis, genitourinary inflammations, arthritis, and osteomyelitis. So these are some other conditions which can, uh, surgical conditions can be present with the typhoid infections. Uh, uh, so you see that uh, previously uh, due to absence of that uh, uh, good uh, investigation technique and good medicines, good antibiotics, previously most of the, uh, the uh, infection of the uh, typhoid were very common uh, the, when the vaccines are not there and patient more, uh, many patients or died were died due to the typhoid infections that leads to the perforation of the intestine but nowadays due to having good uh, antibiotics good good uh, 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 investigation techniques you can easily anybody can easily diagnose the typhoid conditions and prevent the 
formation of that uh, these complications just like perforations and hemorrhage one thing uh, i uh, like to just, just uh, note that the uh, the cholecystitis the patient with the typhoid uh, cholecystitis most likely the positive or typhoid because the gall bladder is the reservoir of the salmonella typhi so uh, if if some sometimes if a patient has cholecystitis and after treatment patient is get well and uh, no complications there but still the reservoir patient has the reservoir of the salmonella typhi in the gall bladder so that the patient of continuously uh, uh, pass the uh, bacteria through the stool stool and that make leads to the uh, uh, spreading of the infections surrounding if the patient is going for the open defecation or the uh, that that uh, the uh, water and the food is contaminated contaminated with that fecal matter understand means the typhoid is easily uh, treatable condition nowadays usually surgery is very rarely required in case of the typhoid only if the complications is there next and the most important that is the tuberculosis intestinal tuberculosis the most of that uh, intestinal tuberculosis occurs in the patients who are suffering already suffering from the pulmonary tuberculosis so pulmonary tuberculosis uh, when the patient of the pulmonary tuber uh, tuberculosis uh, the, just to swallow the uh, the, the uh, sputum from the uh, lungs containing huge amount of the bacteria and the patient is continuously swallowing that that uh, own sputum so that the bacteria are get exposed so our intestine is get uh, exposed to with this bacteria and because the patient of that uh, tuberculosis is always having lower immunity so that the uh, gut is also infected with this mycobacterium tuberculosis the most affected part are the ileum proximal colon and the peritoneum mesentery are also affected uh, with the uh, tuberculosis you know tuberculosis is the uh, because the uh, high, high incidence because tuberculosis is is uh, community spread disease uh, it presents whole our in our environment and if somebody has lower immunity less body weight then patient is more likely uh, likely to get the infection of the tuberculosis we are we are discussing the tuberculosis of the intestine so principally the two type of the tuberculosis of intestines are there one ulcerative tuberculosis and second hyperplastic tuberculosis ulcerative tuberculosis there where the tuberculosis infection of the tuberculosis uh is the uh, the bacteria is uh, virulence is high and patients have a patient have lower immunity that causes the small uh, ulcers tubercle tuberculin and uh, small ulcers that is undermined ulcers in the intestine so here we just a uh, uh, little uh, in detail the that uh, we already discussed usually at the secondary to the pulmonary tuberculosis there are the multiple small abscess in the uh, terminal part of the ileum lying transversally and over the line serosa and over line serosa is thick and reddened and covered with the tubercles tubercles are nothing just like a small uh, a small piece just just like a small uh, a small abscess that sort present in that uh, wall of that lumen in the in the serosa in the mucosa layer and the characteristic of these ulcers are usually these ulcers are transverse to the line of the uh, axis of the gut where the typhoid ulcers are parallel to the uh, longitudinal axis and the uh, typhoid uh, the tuberculosis ulcer are transverse to the uh, uh, axis of the gut these are the shallow ulcers and having the overhanging uh, margins 
the the characteristic of that uh, uh, of the tuberculosis is is undermined aging of, of in the ulcers the clinical features in, in involved along with the general symptoms of the tuberculosis just like uh, anorexia loss of weight inline temperature along with these uh, other symptoms patients have the diarrhea and the weight loss including other general uh, general symptoms uh, for the investigations barium meal and uh, follow through or barium enema will show the absence of filling in the affected part because the affected part has very high mort uh, mortality hyper hyper mortality because uh, that part is inflamed and hyperactive little hyperactive so if that uh, radio opaque uh, material uh, the uh, barium either uh, by the follow through either by the enema if you insert then that part of gut uh, doesn't keep that part and just uh, move that part forward or the backward so that affected part usually uh, shows absence of that filling of that uh, radio opaque uh, material and that the lumen of that uh, uh, affected part is also narrowed so the patient you, you can find in the x rays of the patient that the the less filling defect in the affected part than the healthy part uh chemotherapy mostly enough surgery is only indicated if patient has the perforation or intestinal obstructions uh means other, other other conditions can be easily treated with the may as a chemotherapy uh, uh advised for that pulmonary tuberculosis no other extra uh, uh, things is required second thing is the hyperplastic tuberculosis hyperplastic tuberculosis is the, is uh, usually occurs in the patient who is who always has the good immunity somehow the uh, abdomen the intestine is get exposed to that bacteria mycobacterium tuberculosis and it get infected but the patient has the good immunity so that the immune system is hyper activated uh, activated and the lymphoid tissue present in the a wall of the intestine serosa layer of the intestine that's called the pf patches that get hypertrophied means that it enlarged so that the thickening or in the wall of the intestine becomes very much that causes the narrowing of the lumen of the uh, tubercle uh, narrowing the lumen of the intestine means the the ulcerative tuberculosis occurs in the patient have the lower immunity in comparatively the patient having hyperplastic tuberculosis have better immunity so that uh, they get resistant they create a high resistance to that organism and get hyper uh, hypertrophy of the lymphoid tissue and the wall of the intestine get hypertrophy the infection limited to the lymphoid follicles in the intestinal wall causing the chronic inflammations leading to the hyperplasticity in the wall of the narrowing lumen narrowing of the lumen here the regional lymph nodes may be involved usually involved so if you are suspecting a patient of the intestinal tuberculosis here the on examination you you may find the soft duffy abdomen with the sometime you feel that uh, some is small Uh, mass just like uh, the lymph uh, lymph nodes uh, the the uh, increased lymph nodes of the abdominal and umbilicus and paraumbilical lymph nodes abdominal lymph nodes sometimes the the the, the inguinal lymph node or the cervical lymph node also may get involved because here the lymphoid tissue is uh, mainly affected in that conditions the clinical features uh, include the the attack of the abdominal pain with intermittent diarrhea that is the usual symptoms because here some uh, the general symptoms of the tuberculosis may not there because the patient has the good immunity so that the patient may have not have that uh, that classical feature of the uh, that uh, anorexia Uh, evening rise temperature and the weight loss patients may have good weight but the patient may have recurrent attack of abdominal pain 
along with the intermittent diarrhea. Will sometimes patients suffer diarrhea for three to four days, and then patient get normal. So, uh, uh, due to partial obstruction, uh, proximal lumens dilated. Uh, so, uh, because of the hyperplasticity of that uh, wall of the intestine, the lumen of the intestine become very narrow. That may cause the subacute or sometimes uh, acute kind of the uh, obstruction in the intestine uh, because the the narrowing of the uh, lumen, uh, the fecal matter may or the food may be not not. Passed properly, that creates the feature of the subacute intestinal obstructions. Patients uh, with uh, hyperplastic tuberculosis may present as with a steatorrhea, anemia, and the loss of weight because patient may not have a proper absorption of the food materials. Sometimes, on the pal patients, palpable mass in the right iliac fossa. May be present just similar to the uh, appendicitis because here the palpable mass is due to the hyperplasticity or the uh, increase the uh, means hypertrophy of that wall of the intestine in the cecal uh, uh, enteropolic junction or cecopolic junctions. The differential diagnosis are the appendicular mass, CA cecum. Uh, Crohn's disease, tuberculosis of the cecum, and actinomycosis. So, the patient with this kind of the presentation, you have to rule out all other conditions that like, like appendicular mass, C erectans, uh, chronic uh, uh, Crohn's disease, tuberculosis of cecum, and actinomycosis of the cecum. So, for this, the radiology is uh, good uh, for to diagnose that conditions. Now uh, you can see you can see in the X-ray that uh, of that uh, small bowel enema, there is a long narrow filling defect in the terminal part of ileum and the proximal and distal both uh, part of the uh, intestine is get dilated because this is the only affected part and a hyperplastic part having the narrow lumen, but the other part is normal so other part is dilated but this part is uh, having the filling defect. The treatment of, of the patient without obstructions, mean without complications, you can easily treat your patient with a chemotherapy that is uh, for that uh, pulmonary tuberculosis. If obstruction is present or the patient present with the perforations, the surgical uh, treatment may be required. In that condition, we have to resect that affected part and anastomosis is required. So uh, this is the just the plan of the intestinal tuberculosis. If there are ulcers, then local resect is ulcers and it get perforated. Then local resection and heliocolectomy. If the stricture formation of the healing of the ulcers and if the narrowing is minimal and tuberculosis drug is enough. If the significant narrowing is there and multiple structure, uh, structure are there, then a structuroplasty just like the pyloroplasty can be done. If the long sticks are very long, then local local resections may be advised. If patient of the intestinal uh, tuberculosis comes with the perforations, then local resection and exteriorization means the colectomy or egostomy may be done. Later on, the reverse process can be done. Uh, in the case of the ileocecal tuberculosis, uh, that limited part of the ileocecal junction can be resected and anastomosis can be done. So this 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 uh, this plan can be followed in the patient uh, management of the inter intestinal tuberculosis. Okay, so uh, tomorrow we discuss the inflammatory bowel disease.